Good afternoon, good morning, or good evening, depending on when you're watching. Welcome to the next amazing edition, or hopefully a good edition, of Cast Iron Bites with an amazing guest, Melissa Fryer from Build a Better Bakery. Melissa, welcome to Cast Iron Bites. How are you today? I am doing well. Just got done baking some sourdough, so we're here yeah. to talk with you. I think that is very on brand, on brand. Are you making it for yourself <laughs> or for others? Uh, I'm actually considering more upscale sales in the area, so I'm testing olive garlic, cranberry pecan, uh, cheddar, and a regular in two different pots. I'm doing my like, experimenting today. So. Does your house smell amazing? Your kids uh, smell amazing. It's, a, it's confusing because of all of the, you know, the mix-ins, but it mostly smells like olives at this point. Okay, well, I mean, that's pretty great. That's a great way to start the day for sure. Um, uh, so Melissa joins us. I'm going to read Melissa's bio. Um, and, and I'm going to ask you some questions about it, but more than two decades working in professional baking, both commercial and cottage, you created and you're the CEO of Build a Better Bakery. Now it's going on five or six years, I think. Um, tell me about um, that transition. When did you go from being a baker to being a baker and a coach? Okay. So within all of those years and we can talk about the beginning beginning if we want in a minute but uh within all of those years of working in commercial spaces so ghost kitchens production kitchens and actual storefronts with owners as an employee or kind of a man managerial position with them they started asking me to do things that i do now so hey can you help me with a production line hey can you help me with my procedure book hey can you help me hire somebody because I often had more experience than they did. Um, hmm. It's kind of strange, right? They're new to they're new to owning a business. I'm coming in with years of experience as an employee, but being asked to basically help them. <laughs> right. Well, you're the, those are the best kinds of employees. Yeah, and I didn't. I like it. Obviously, I wouldn't have started to build a better bakery if I didn't like having those conversations. So it just gave me some, I guess, planted the seed for later on. And then, um, in a nutshell. I'm a military spouse, so we move a lot. And owning a commercial space on my own, it's if you're only living somewhere for like two to two to three years, it's just not feasible. You're not really going to be able to make the footprint that you want. And um, because we were moving so much and moving to different areas, I, I didn't know the market. You know, it just it's a little risky. So I just stayed cottage myself. Um, and then in 2018, we moved to a very uh, I'm not, I guess it's rural. It's isolated. It's an isolated military installation, closed gate in the middle of the Mojave Desert, <laughs> mm. six miles wide. It's intense to move somewhere yeah. like that. Um, so I think I just needed like to get out there and um, see how I could continue being interested in my life and the things that I knew about. So I started to build a better bakery online and then just continued to bake for my local community too. So kind of splitting my time between it for the first two years. And then after I got a lot of the basics set up for the business, I got to do more baking because it was all kind of automated. Um, That's on the amazing. Back end. Yeah. Okay. So, so build, so sorry, it's at buildabetterbakerynow.com yeah. and buildabetterbakerynow.com offers resources like online courses, an elite membership program, professional documents for download, workshops, private coaching, and a pretty active community as well. Yeah. Did I miss anything in there? No, uh, we just re released a new course. I tried to do at least one or two a year. Um, that one's called Cottage to Commercial. So if you are interested in opening commercial, myself and the other two military spouses that are part of my team, we came in and made, uh, you know, a direct click 24 seven access course. So you can go through that, take the resources we plugged into it, um, and it also includes access to coaching. So we can talk one-on-one -on -one about you know, whatever it is you're doing with your business. What an amazing resource. So let's go back. What's the first thing you remember banking? How did you start to bake? Uh, <laughs> so um, I would actually describe my beginnings as more of, I, I wanted a job mm -hmm. and I was in um, art school. So I have art degrees and I walked into, and it was, it's in a rural community in Missouri. It's called Truman State University in Kirksville. And um, I walked into the little grocery store and they just had this little, you know, printout that said cake decorator needed like on the front door. Um, so I went in and I was like, hey, me. And he's like, had you, you, ever, know, had you ever decorated a cake before? No, not one. Zero. Not one. And no, nope, not one. And he's like, what's why are you applying for this job? And I'm like, oh, well, I'm in art school. So, I mean, I'm a, I have a ceramics degree. I have a printmaking degree. I use my hands all the time, you know. 
And he gave me, he's like, you've got two weeks to show me that you can learn how to do this. Um, and it worked out. And we were, ch because it was a grocery store, it's one of those 15 to 20 cakes per day per person kind of deal. Mm -hmm. um, basically happy birthdays, icing roses and balloons until the day ends kind yeah. of vibe. Um, so it was really, it was a good training to get fast at certain things. Um, so yeah, that's, that was my entrance. And then, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I want to, I want to, I want to ask about that though, because we were talking a little bit offline about confidence and yeah. how so many cottage bakers and cottage food makers fail, fails the wrong word, maybe bail or stop yep. or uh, because of, or don't start because of a lack of confidence in what they can do. How does that, I mean, gosh, to walk into a store never having done it before, is that natural or did you have to psych yourself up or and do you see that with folks? So if anyone listening has ever been to art school, one thing that they basically make you do is they make you become kind of overconfident because you have to sell your art and you have to explain your art in front of strangers pretty much every day. That's a lot of pressure. Um, so I don't know. I think I was just young and just, I just, it didn't matter to me if I didn't do it well. Does that make sense? Like I just, I wanted yeah. to try it and it was the only job that I, I was working in a different job that was so boring. I couldn't even stay awake. So <laughs> for me, it was exciting, um, to get the chance. And, and do you, do you, t when you're coaching folks at build a better bakery now.com, <laughs> do you, do you see that confidence issue come up for people starting or stopping? Yeah, 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 all the time. It's it's different for everybody. I think, of course, there's going to be personal things, things people have said to you, things that you say to yourself is actually the biggest problem. <laughs> it's not even things people have said to you. You're saying you're repeating negative stuff about yourself in your head. Um, I don't know if it's female related. I, I deal with a lot of women, but some men. I actually, one of my old bosses was a retired military mechanic, and his dream was to open a bakery. So. Oh. It was me and him, <laughs> but um, yeah, I think that it has a lot to do with being scared to what people would say fail. I think it's just learning lessons because all of us have gotten an L, you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. it's part of it. Um, if you're not trying, if you're not failing, you're not trying. So, you know, that's part of just experimenting. And I think people are just nervous about having to say, oh, that, that event didn't work out or right. you know, that kind of thing. So um, I think just realizing that it's it's okay i guess it's okay yeah i mean <laughs> yeah, it's, if okay. You don't, it's expected if you don't, it's expected and if you don't try new things yep. you're not going to get to what you want to be doing because it's no it doesn't... Way, yeah and there's no way there's no reason that you should know exactly what to do in every situation you know it's that's why the mentorship and stuff comes in is we're here to kind of listen and tell you what we've seen but it's everyone, everyone has different turns to take. So, you know, eventually something will work out. You just got to keep, keep doing what feels the best for you. Got it. So then you were, you were working in a uh, grocery store. Okay. Yes. Happy so, birthday. Okay. Happy birthday, little guy. Happy fifth. Be Becky. Tea cakes. Yeah. Like yes. the whole, yes. Um, graduation season's huge. That kind of thing. Uh, so then I graduated with my second degree. I was a five, like super senior, five years. And then, um, I moved to St. Louis and in Missouri. And when I got there, I was an art camp counselor and I was like having the best time. And then as kind of a little, not really a joke, but I, I applied for a lead designer position at a million dollar bakery. Okay. Huge bakery in St. Louis. They had catering food truck, like expanded with a production kitchen and a storefront. And I didn't know if she would hire me or not, you know, with grocery store experience. <laughs> but, right, but a lot of cakes. A lot, yeah, but she, but they were, I'll, I'll tell you in a second. So um, when I applied, we met up at her catering uh, storefront area and I was fully aware, you know, what I was walking into. And she, same thing. She said, you have these art degrees, same as the first guy. I'll give you a shot. Um, the difference is that when I walked in, her orders instead of sheet cakes with happy birthday were multi-thousand dollar wedding cakes so mm -hmm. <laughs> totally not, not a lot of elmo on there mm, yeah and another lady i was supposed to be apprenticing her um and then about a month in she said hey on the dl i'm leaving to start my own business which is still in she still has her own business but she's like i'm, I'm leaving and she left 
and it was me. <laughs> so oh, wow. there were a lot of pastry chef talking tos, a lot of tears, but also I got, um, I was in local competitions for our bakery. That was like super cool. Um, I was in printed in multiple magazines, uh, stuff like that. So, you know, they basically paid to teach me how to do did, all of this, but it was, did you ever feel, did this feel risky to you? Did you ever feel like you were taking a risk or was this just natural? A risk? Like how so with my, like going to a million dollar bakery. Um, like, cause you know, you, the way you're representing it is <laughs> they hired me and I just did it. But gosh, yeah. I'm trying to put myself in the shoes of someone starting out or someone who's not as successful as you have been thinking, I could never do that. Like, um, maybe you can. I kind of like we talked about, I am a risk taker. Like I, I decided if they didn't like it, they could fire me. I mean, if they, if they don't like what I'm doing. And like I said, I had just graduated with two art degrees and they teach you to be overconfident. <laughs> and I will say that yeah. was problem with that job and I the pastry chef talking to's had to do with that <laughs> yeah um they're like you need to do it the way that the recipe says or there's going to be a problem so um I did have to learn those lessons of be what an employee really is versus I think I was kind of always entrepreneur driven and I had to turn into an employee to get them you know to deal with that situation and then later just went back to <laughs> doing what I wanted. But, um, but yeah, so I worked there for, I think three years. I got ton like, I can't even describe, they really did me a favor. It was painful, but, um, that was good. And then I married a person who was like, Hey, I'm going to join the military. I was like, cool. And then we moved. Um, and then I just got, different bakery jobs at different economic levels, you know, rural to urban, um, and just worked inside and did lots of different things for them, but mostly design. So my baking experience actually started, uh, when I decided to kind of branch off and do my own thing at home while also still working in a bakery. And I also teach like paint and sip classes. <laughs> so Love it. I was doing all three of those at one time yeah. uh, when we lived in Tennessee. Um, and then, yeah, and then I just worked for myself after that. It's just easier. Um, you don't have to go in. And then I had a baby, new mom, that whole thing. Yeah. Moving every two, you know, it's it's just easier, I guess. It's but, a complex pie of different slices to to figure out. And I see that with, with a lot of cottage folks is that it's always, it's often I'm a baker and I do sip and paint. I'm a baker and I do insurance adjusting. I'm a baker and a caregiver. I'm a baker and, you know, all these things. And yep. I think that obviously speaks to the the hustle and effort of the of our customers and of the space, but also of the complexity and changing environment of the economy and the unevenness of the distribution of opportunity. Um, I, I wonder in your business now at Build a Better Bakery, at, www.buildabetterbakerynow.com. Go there now. Um, <laughs> we'll have links to it and all of that below, and including the Cottage to Commercial Bakery course, which is linked off the homepage there. Um, uh, what do you mistake? Are there common mistakes you see your customer, your clients making? And how, what are the most common mistakes that you see people making? Uh because I do, I, I really kind of mentor on a lot. It's, I, I'm not, I don't just focus on just pricing or just marketing or, you know, I, I try to give, um, it's more of kind of like, I, I like to focus on finding the joy. So I try to help people de-stress, mm -hmm. give them strategies to make more money with less time because that's who I, I mean, I'm doing other stuff. I have a family, you know, like you said, I think multi-passionate entrepreneurs are more, um, more closely related to me than mm -hmm. someone who's, and I know that hyper-focus is good. I realize that, but that's not what brings me joy. I, I need to do these other things to make sure I feel fulfilled. I have been swallowed up by my business before and I know what it feels like and it can be scary. So that's mm -hmm. just how, where I'm at. Um, so really one of, I tried to narrow it down because you told me that we were going to talk about this. And I think that it's really people looking for advice where it's really kind of good too good to be true vibes and they go with it because maybe they don't have a lot of time. They don't want to ask questions to people like me, you know, stuff like that. 
And an example would be pricing with a formula like materials times three. So that's something I hear in pastry school gets thrown around. That's not gonna work. There's a lot of reasons why, but mainly because you're not looking at all of your numbers. So knowing your numbers, that's gold in your business. If you don't, it's, it tells me you're just a little nervous about seeing the insides and seeing kind of what's happening. Um, because if you're working alone, it's all on you. No one else, your yeah. account is not gonna look at it, you know? Um, so what happens is people take that advice because it's quick, it's easy, it's digestible within a few seconds. You don't have to think about it. And then they go to do their taxes and they're like, hey, I'm in the red or I didn't make any money. And then that whole year they think back on it. They think that was too much work and then they stop. Yes. Or they get discouraged or they think they have all these money mindset, like they won't pay me enough. I can't charge that. All of this starts bubbling up because they didn't start with the facts. And I'm like, a, am a real big facts pace, facts yes. pace, why person. Um. So I know you asked about the advice too, and that would, that would really be it is just start with the facts, get some help, get automated, like website, everything that you're offering. I see you adding things that people are literally asking for. Hey, can we have X, Y, Z? Yeah. Oh, look, a month later, it, it pops up and it's there. So, you know, finding resources that actually help you get where you need to be. Um, but looking under the sheet, <laughs> like you make yeah. it, you know, it's real. Uh, cause I think a lot of bakers are, um, there's like these rose colored glasses, beautiful bakery, the dream, the smells, all of that, yeah. which is great, but is it sustainable? You know? Well, well, you have one employee, it's yourself. You have to be the baker. You have to be the marketer, the lawyer, the admin, the tax person, like all of those things. And like, talk about not finding joy. Like, no, thank you. Like, yeah. that's not why any of us got into doing what we do. So we could do the stuff that is oh, annoying. Like, no, thanks. Yeah, like, no. Life is too short. Life is too short to spend time doing things that make you unhappy. I think yeah. if you, um, and I do think that um, what excites me as as we talked about, I'm not a baker, I'm an entrepreneur. And I look at the millions of people around the world who need help yeah. starting running in a, a successful business. And the ability to do so out of your home or out of your kitchen, I think is just, it's such a, it's such a, I don't know, it's just such a big opportunity. Um, yeah. And and so we're excited about it. All right, Melissa, we get to this point now where I ask you a couple of rapid fire questions. Okay. There are no wrong answers. Okay. Um, you're checking your notes. <laughs> I'm prepared. A, well, I already know. A, <laughs> you, we're fact-based, but what if I change the questions now? Okay, change. Be totally, no, uh, I would never do that. Um, the, everybody's a winner on Cast Iron Bites. All right, so what was the best meal you ever had, Melissa? Okay, so my most recent memory is I told you off off the recording that we were living in California for five years before this. So our best meal was when we were walking the San Diego coast. We just, we had our dogs. We just walked into this cute restaurant overlooking the ocean. It was dog friendly. They fed our dogs like a little rice and chicken meals. And outside overlooking the ocean sunset uh three tier sashimi fresh you know fish um on ice set up delicious and my little blackberry mojito okay it was oh. i mean i got the chills i, I, yeah, I mean, you're like yes i was like yes i'm in i'm in <laughs> um that sounds amazing all right what about the best piece of advice you've ever been given you give a lot of advice but what's the best advice you've been given yeah, I had to think about that. I, I don't categorize stuff, you know, in that way. But I think the probably if I could reword it would just be what we've been talking about, which is just keep trying new strategies until it feels good. Because if you want something for yourself, like even a small business, if it's sucking the life out of you every time you tap in, it's never going to work. And it's real. it's not worth it. And it's not sustainable. Um so just finding, like we've been talking about tools or avenues or formulas or whatever it is that you can snag onto to kind of put the plus sign on your joy or the plus sign on your energy, because it's, that's not what life's about. You know what I mean? Like, I love it. It's like, it's like you're increasing the volume on the, on the, every time. you just yeah. keep hitting plus, 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 plus. Yeah. I love it. Okay. Um, who inspires you? Okay. You're inspiring to the whole community, but who inspires you, Melissa? Uh, I also had trouble with this because I don't really have that. Like, 
oh, that famous person or, oh, that I just, that's not, um, let me, and oh, this is going to probably make some people upset. But when I started working at that million dollar bakery, I didn't really even know who Julia Child was. <laughs> okay. And the pastry chefs were like, whoa, <laughs> like, who are you? Um, cause I was more art, you know? Mm -hmm. Uh, but anyway, so I don't really have that famous person, but I will say that I have my, a friend, Cindy, who keeps coming up when I think about this and she's a baker also, she's one of my best friends. So it's kind of weird for me to say her, but that it, it is her. I don't and, think that's weird at all. <laughs> yeah. And she's was one of the first opportunities I had to mentor. She was the first one to jump on board when I started my business. She's like, yes, like I want what you're, what you're doing. Um, she's still a part of it. And she started her business at that little location. We lived in the same place for once, which was amazing. She had lots of success. It was amazing. Well, then she had a baby. She had a second child. That, of course, takes you out normally of what you're, where you, what you're used to doing with your business. They had a huge life change. They left the military. They moved to a new place. It was just this entire shift. And it's taken up until now for her to find the energy to jump back in. But she, she's like showing up she's going she's baking amazing stuff she's going to vendor events she's making it work uh and i know her stuff is delicious because i've eaten it and it's so i like watching people i'm inspired by people who have hurdles um or make mistakes right make have a failure and then roll it up and do something that's working for them so that's i like to see that and that inspires me to do the same i mean that's a wonderful answer. It doesn't have to be somebody famous. Um, it doesn't have to be a celebrity, but it's, you know, there's so many opportunities for inspiration every day and they're just around us. And I find for me, when I get out of my own head and stop thinking about all the mistakes or, or opportunities, the stuff that voice in my head that we talked about earlier is to look at how hard other people are working to get to where they want to be and how it is not easy. I talk about it with my sons all the time. If life was easy, it wouldn't be called work. Like it's work. You gotta, <laughs> you gotta keep going. Um, Melissa, I can't thank you enough um, for what you do for the community and for giving us a little bit of time. Um, I would encourage everybody here to visit www.buildabetterbakerynow.com. <laughs> There's a long story. Check, that. <laughs> uh, I'm sure it's a long URL. Um, you need to have a long story, but build a better bakery now.com. We'll do we'll tell that story on, on season two together. Uh, <laughs> we'll, when we get back together. It's really a joy to meet you. Thanks so much for your time and have a wonderful day. Thank you so much.